So, uh, I think maybe a tender, finger-picking ballad, something deep, something from deep within that makes you just cry. <laughs> Hello, my name is Greg Kidd. Welcome to Wolfgang's Vault. I'd like to do a song that put both of my kids through college and partial grandchildren as well. We'd broken up for good just an hour before. Uh 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 uh. Yeah, I like this. I this is it. It's working out so far. <laughs> so, so good. All right. Now I'm staring at the bodies as they're dancing across the floor. Uh 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 uh. uh. Cause they don't write them like that anymore And they haven't since 1984 They just don't write them like that anymore We've been living together for a million years uh -uh 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 -uh. And I feel so strange out in the atmosphere Plays a song I used to know. Uh, 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 uh. I'm staring at the bodies, the dance is so slow. Uh, 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 uh. My hit. Uh, this song uh, was it was a was a number one record uh, in 1983. I was only 12 years old at the time, and I don't remember much. But it's become more difficult to sing over the years. So, what I thought I'd do here for you guys is just do kind of a different finger picking arrangement of it visualize Jeopardy 
played by Andre Segovia and sung by Mark Knopfler. There's the Knopfler part right there. Where were you when I needed you? You could not be found. What can I do? Well, I believed in you. You're running me around. Well, you can take it as a warning. Or take it any way you like. Cause it's the lightning. Not the thunder You never know where it's gonna strike Our love's in Jeopardy, baby Don't get funny now It's later than you think Ooh, What's the use Saving your money now It's hanging on the brain Well don't let go While I'm hanging on Because I'm hanging on so long it's so hard to be all alone I know you're not that strong yeah yeah our love's in jeopardy baby Jeopardy, 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 Jeopardy. Hey! Thank you. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty official. Well, welcome to Wolfgang's Vault. My name is Greg Ken, and I've got a tune to sing for you. That sounds corny. Thank you. different directions. I think we'll stay in the Bo Diddley groove though. Here we go. Say hey, Mona. Oh, Mona. 
I say yeah, 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 Mona. Summertime, we could go kissing through the blind. I tell you, baby, my heart's in front. Woo. Listen to my love, go thumpity thump. Well, baby, but that's no lie. Without your love, I'd surely die. I said. Thank you. Hi, this is Brad Town from Wolfgang's Vault, and I am honored to be sitting here with Greg Kinn, a local legend who just played a great set for us here at the Vault. Greg, thanks so much well, for being here. Well, thank you, Brad. <laughs> God bless you, sir. So we love to claim you as one of our own here in the Bay Area, but you're originally from Baltimore, uh, Baltimore right? originally, but you know, I cut my teeth in the Bay Area, came out here in 71, and, uh, you know, I, I just, be it was a scene and I just became part of the scene. You know, the band was put together, I think about 75 and we mm -hmm. played our first gig. First album came out in 76, I believe. And, uh, you know, we'd always been a Bay area band. You notice how Bay area bands are regional. You had your Marin bands like, right. like Huey. Yep. Sons of Champlin, you Marin, right? Yeah. Uh, you had your East Bay bands. Earthquake, the Greg Kinn band, uh, you know, Ruben Ooze. Mm -hmm. uh, you had your San Francisco bands. You know, you had your South Bay bands like the Doobies. That's what the, the great thing about the Bay Area. It's a great scene, man. And I just plugged right in. I, suit, I didn't even have a band. I was just doing a folky thing, being a right. singer-songwriter. And the, the, the guy, Malcolm, that used to own the Long Branch said, man, it's a shame you don't have a band. Because I need somebody to be the house band here. Eddie Money just kind of graduated. Eddie had been the house band at the right. Long Branch. He said, you know, Eddie's leaving. You know, if you had a band, I could, I could plug you in. I said, well, I got a band. I got <laughs> a great band. I didn't. <laughs> right. uh, went out and put a band together in one week. That band stayed together for 15 years and made 10 albums oh, wow. and had a whole bunch of hit records. So go figure. Yeah, that's pretty lucky you know, to turn it around that fast. It was, you know, it was all the, the great rock and roll is not planned. It just happens. No, I, I you know, agree. and I learned that to not fight it. Just let it happen. All right. Is it time to talk about Bill Graham? <laughs> we can move tell on to the Bill truth Graham about like. Bill Certainly. because I loved Bill Graham. Maybe more than most of, you know, I know that. For instance, he was he was directly involved with Eddie's career, mm -hmm. so that he couldn't really Eddie can't be objective. I, on the other hand, a complete outsider, really, uh, and I knew Bill, and I and and we always got along. the The first time that I got Bill's respect, it was the first gig we ever played for, for like our first big gig was at Winterland, and he called That's me up gig. in the afternoon. He said, "Hey, cheap trick canceled because Robin's got." laryngitis can you guys be set up and ready to go by 7 30 i said yes what door do we go with you know what i what i was there we go well, i didn't even think about who the headliner was as we drove up on the marquee black sabbath i'm out there with my acoustic 12 string doing songs like you know moon shadow and people are like giving me the finger and they're throwing stuff and they're just they're chanting and they're lighting candles and they hated me <laughs> They hated me. And I come off the stage, and Bill's standing there. And I go, Bill, 
come on, man. Why did you put us on with Sabbath? He goes, I just wanted to see what you were made of. And he says, you know, I needed a warm body. You guys were available, and I wanted to see if you could take it. And we took it. And he said, look, you're still standing, aren't you? You know, and I, ironically, I was. Of course, they threw everything at me. <laughs> but the beautiful thing was, as the years went by, we became one of Bill's favorites, and mm-hmm. we opened hundreds of shows at Winterland. As a matter of fact, we, the last, remember the end of Winterland, the final, final day? It was a six-hour concert by the Grateful Dead. Yep. Incredible show. It's been documented. You can, the, the video is available, probably through Wolfgang's vault, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the night before. The night before Winterland closed, it was the Greg Kinn Band and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Great now, that was a great gig. <laughs> both bands were prime, and we'd, we'd both been veterans of Winterland, so we played there a million times, and, we, and the place was sold out. It was just a great show. And everybody's taking souvenirs. People are unscrewing whole you know, st- st- uh, strips of seats, you know, like they were like bleacher seats, right? right? They were they were like baseball seats. And they were taking them right out in front of Bill, right under his nose. And Bill was like smiling and waving because he knew that the, that the, the building had a date with a wrecking ball yeah, and right. there was no reason to, don't take those seats. So people are getting crazy and they're taking everything. They're taking <laughs> doors. They're taking, so I'm in the dressing room. And, and this is, okay, flashback to why Bill Graham liked Greg to begin with. Because one time, after a gig, my mother always told me when she was alive, God bless her soul, always thank Bill Graham. At the end of every gig, if he throws you a bone, you go and say, thanks for the gig, Bill. So I go and I'm, I'm going looking for him to thank him. And he's talking to Bar- one of the Barsodis. <laughs> so he's talking. And I come up one Bill, and he's got a white thing right here, like a little white thingy. And I walk up and I go, and he, and he kind of, he's talking to Barsodi and he looks over and goes, hey, Greg. I walk up and I go, hey, Bill, white thing, right there, right there, right, white thing. He goes, he looks at Barsodi and he goes, I've been talking to you for 10 fucking minutes. You don't tell me I got a white thing? <laughs> this punk walks up, first thing out of his mouth, you got a white thing? You're fired! It was a great so I kind of backed away. I didn't know what to say. I yeah. just kind of walked into it. Of course, he rehired him the next day. Bill was famous for that. But so I'm looking for Bill to say thanks. You know, I didn't want another white thing incident. But, you know, I, I'm sitting in the back room and we're looking in the mirror. You know, the back rooms, there was two dressing rooms at Winterland, one on either side of a big communal room. Okay. And everybody and his brother had primped in this mirror. I'm looking in the mirror. Me and Steve, we're smoking a joint. We're looking in the mirror. And he's going, I see, I see Janice. Janice looked in this mirror. Jimi Hendrix primped in this mirror. Jim Morrison shaved in this mirror. This mirror is magic. We have to steal it. <laughs> so I got, I mean, I get my roadies out. We get, we get a couple of Phillips heads. And, I'm, and it was a door-sized mirror. It was big. Right. And we uh, took a long time, and we scraped it and unscrewed it and gently removed the mirror. And I'm thinking, man, this mirror is Hall of Fame. Uh, it's going to go in my house, and I'm going to have Winterland Mirror. I'm going to have Bill sign the bottom of the mirror. This mirror is gold. The stones primped. Brian Jones primped in this mirror. I mean, this mirror is it. So we're trying. There was an underground parking garage, and I had an Alfa Romeo. You can see the end of this story. <laughs> and me and a couple of guys gently carried it down and put it in the Alfa. Took the top down, so it's sticking out like a door. And of course, I get in there, and I, and I this <laughs> I was living over here on. Uh, I was living over by uh, Cal Hollow on That's Laguna true. Street, and in the middle of the night, I'm driving. I go about. One block and the, the whole thing shatters into a million pieces. And I was pulling shards of that mirror out of my Alfa Romeo for 10 years. <laughs> you know, they say if you broke a mirror, you get seven years bad luck. I'm telling you, th- three divorces, come on, a couple of bankruptcies, it, they ripped me. A new one <laughs> was because of that freaking mirror, man. If I had just not taken the mirror. I mean, you know, John, Janice and Jimmy, they wanted to stay 
in the mirror. But I broke the mirror and Mm -hmm. released them out to the world, and karmically I had to pay the price. (laughs) And that's why Bill Graham liked me. (laughs) Wow. Well, Any other I, questions, yeah, Brad? I don't really know how to follow that up, honestly. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you... I got to tell you, the beautiful thing about Wolfgang's Vault, there's so much history here. And you know True. what? You, as rock and roll grows up, you've seen what's on television. You've seen Lady Gaga. This stuff has to be maintained like the pyramids. You know, this is like the pyramids, man. You've got to maintain this historical stuff. And by the way, I want all the Greg Kin posters you got here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put them in the back of the Alpha with yeah. the right under the mirror. <laughs> hey. um, well, so we've kind of covered a, a bit of the, the music history, but now you've kind of you also at a certain point transitioned into DJing yeah. locally here. So kind of how did that how did that transition happen? Well, Larry Sharp hired me to I was filling in for somebody doing seven to midnight at a little mom and pop station called K Fox in San Jose. Sure. Larry Sharp was the program director. Well, wow. he hired me and then the station had started getting bought by different people. And it, every time they sold it, it got to a bigger and finally uh, after a year doing seven to midnight, they offered me the morning show. This was in nineteen ninety three or four. And I've been doing the morning show for the last, what, 17 years or 16 years or something? It's ridiculous. I get up at 4 in the morning for that long. I used to go to bed at 4. <laughs> I get up then. And it's, but I got into the idea that kind of like the vaults here, you know, it was part of history. Sure. And I, it, there was a legacy, 20 years of rock and roll. And finally now, the whole thing has come full circle because the little station, the little mom and pop station that I signed up for was purchased by Clear Channel and then recently purchased by Entercom. And Entercom, is, uh, they've, they've moved us up here into San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I'm in these palatial penthouse studios. It's the big leagues, you know? And, and I had just, you know, and like, like everything else in rock and roll, it wasn't planned. It just happened. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for me to kind of come home to San Francisco after spending 14 years in the South Bay And, uh, you know, my career, I mean, I've always been blessed with this creative bug. You know, I write novels. I got a screenplay. We're going to make a movie next year. We were out for that movie coming out next year. (laughs) Um, I've written a couple of novels. I do the morning show on K-Fox and probably will continue to do that for years to come. I just feel like my ship came in. I wasn't looking. It wasn't scheduled to come in. It just Mm. came in. You know, and now I get up in the morning and, and, the, and half of me is cursing the world because it's, I get up at 345. And the other half of me is saying, God bless you. This is a great job. People would die to have your life. I mean, what a great life. You know, I recently became a grandfather. Oh, me, congratulations. Greg Kinn, a grandfather. I know that's shocking. And, and it really gives you a feeling of continuity. And here I am. Now with K Fox moving into the big leagues and coming up to San Francisco, so now we're on two state, we're on two uh, frequencies, we're 98.5 oh, really? in San Jose, and we're now simulcasting a 1021 in San Francisco, right. which really covers us all the way from Santa Rosa to Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a huge, a huge amount of people, and to be able to address them every morning and to go to work with them, so like I know, I feel like I know these people and they know me. You know, half of them. I probably owe money to, and the other half saw me at a gig somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. The number one thing when guys come up to me or anybody comes up to me, they always come up and they say, April 12th, 19 freaking 79. I saw you, man. You were great. They always got dates. People come running. Oh, God, New Year's Eve, 1983, dude. Cal Palace loved you. <laughs> oh, there's a good story. Bill Graham built this flying v gondola guitar that i was going to get in it was big it was as big as these couches and it, and it was on a cable and i was at the cow palace he took me all the way to the top of the cow palace yeah. on the catwalk and i'm afraid of heights i went up there and bill took he said i said bill i can't do it i can't do it he says you're doing it he just grabbed me by the hand dragged me out there put me in the guitar and i'm like white knuckles the guitar was like very small and it was swinging and I'm on a cable at the top of the cow palace and he goes, bye. Wow. And the cable, the guitar slides down the cable <laughs> at a, at a given moment. I think about 
15 seconds before midnight, suddenly the spotlight hits me. Balloons are falling, and hey! <laughs> Here comes Greg down the cable. And just as I hit the stage right at midnight, boom, all the, you know, the, the balloons come down, the confetti goes off. And I'm, you know, I tell you, I almost peed in my pants. In fact, <laughs> I may have passed a little water. <laughs> Going down that cable, yeah, I can and I was high, man. It, this was back. This was '83. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not condoning the use of these substances, but back in the '80s, we were known, and and uh, Bill Graham just put me in that cable and shot me down there. It was unbelievable. Oh, wow. I got a million Bill Graham stories, but I better stop. You know, while while my stock still has some value well, here, yeah, we, we could listen to these all day. But thank you so much for being here. Um, it's really been a pleasure and an honor. I mean, uh, thank you so Why, much. Why, thank Greg. you, Brad. All right, and thank you all, and thanks thanks to Wolfgang's Vault for making all this possible.